Hello everyone, I'm Chris Wassler, and today we are going to be talking about the oh no layer and how having nice hair killed the ozone. So in order for us to realize what the problem is and how to solve it, we have to know what the ozone layer is. So the ozone layer is located in the second layer of the atmosphere, 15 to 30 kilometers above Earth's surface, and it wraps around the entirety of the Earth. So a lot of people think that the ozone layer protects the planet from like global warming and stuff, but that's just not true. It actually helps defend against the Earth's harmful UV lights. So what goes on in the ozone layer? Although oxygen, 21% of all molecules in the atmosphere are oxygen, there's only three ozone molecules for every 10 million molecules of everything. So luckily for us, these molecules, one, can make a huge difference. So when the sun's UV lights combine with O3, it splits into 1O2 and 1O1. And these O1s can react with other O1s to make O2, or they can react with another O2 and create ozone. So it's like a recycling process. So why is it so dangerous for us to not have an ozone layer? There, the sun lets off three different rays, UVC, UVB, and UVA. They're all pretty much the same thing, just different strengths and different wavelengths. UVC have stronger or more rapid wavelengths, making them more dangerous. But luckily for us, ozone uh, absorbs 99% of UVC rays. UVB rays, it absorbs 90%. And UVA, it only absorbs 50 because it's not, the UVA light aren't strong enough to break through the ozone. So what happens is, when these rays hit ozone, the energy causes it to break apart the bonds, which absorbs it, so it can't reach Earth's surface. These rays can cause skin cancer, aging, eye damage, weakened immune systems, and mutations. UVC obviously has more effective damage than UVB and A. So what's the problem? Problem is, in 1980, Aerosol came out with a hairspray that did that. This is the ozone hole. So the ozone hole is an area over the Antarctica where there's less dense ozone compared to all around the world. So when people sprayed it and fixed up their mullets and big fluffy hairdos, it put toxics in the air, which brought it all the way down to Antarctica and got trapped because of the polar vortex, which is pretty much circular winds that don't let anything in or out. So what are these chemicals that actually do the damage? They have huge names, chlorofluorocarbons, hydrofluorofluorocarbons, and halines. And what they do, they, they're strong bonds, so they can stay together for a long time, meaning they can float up to the first and second layers of the atmosphere. And once they finally get up there, the UV rays finally begin to bring them down after the world winds bring them to Antarctica. And once they break apart, chlorine is let free. And chlorine is actually what kills the ozone, one chlorine molecule can take apart 1,000 ozone molecules before it's naturally sustained, and that's why they're so dangerous. So, why should you even care if what you use in the United States just goes to Antarctica anyway? Well, first off, it still affects you too. They can stay above the Earth, your hemisphere, they just move it towards the Antarctica. And what the UV rays do to species in Antarctica, 
They reduce plant growth and coral growth. Plankton survival rate goes way down. Fish and other marine animals, their reproductive system is greatly affected, meaning they have a harder time making more fish babies. And it, in the, some of the ozone hole can travel over to land where humans live, and it can directly affect humans. So with less plankton, there's less food for the fish, and the fish are already having a harder time reproducing. And then bigger fish can't eat as many fish, and we eat those fish. So it's all affecting the food chain negatively. So what did, what did we do about it? In 1987, the UN came together and we devised a plan to address the ozone hole. This plan is called the Montreal Protocol. So what they did in this was uh, they banned the process of any ozone depleting substances. So in January 2010 is when all of the countries in the UN decided that they were going to be a part of this and stop using it. And just one year later, 97% of ozone depleting substances were no longer in commercial use. Obviously, they're still in the air right now because we have an ozone hole still, but it began the healing process. So this is what it was like before we started using ozone depleting substances. This was what it was like four years ago. That was pretty much at its prime. And it's predicted that by 2070, the ozone hole will be nearly fully healed. So why should we, why am I even showing you this if the problem is pretty much healed? Well, that's because we can see this as an inspiration that no matter how badly we screw up, we can always make a comeback. And we can use this as faith to help us against uh, warming, global warming, overuse of greenhouse gases, endangered species, and other things. Thank you.